Good evening. The meeting of the Cannabis Control Board of the City of Jersey City held Monday, July 22nd, 2024 at approximately 518 at uh, Fort Jackson Square in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act known as the Sunshine Bill. Adequate notice of the meeting was provided by mail and or fax to the Jersey Journal. Roll call, please. Chairperson Bunny. Here. Vice Chairperson Cantorero. Here. Commissioner Kaplowitz. Here. Absent is Commissioner Marte Double. Yep. All right. Um, we're going to get right into it. The first application is uh, for final approval pursuant to Chapter uh, Section 84-51 of the Municipal Code, CCB 22-10 Euphoria. Nice to see you again. Have a seat. Please raise your hand, your right hand. Do you swear from the testimony about to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yeah. You can put your hand down. Please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address. Bashim Spahi, B-A-S-H-K-I-M, S-P-A-H-I, 17 Concord Street, Jersey City, New Jersey. All right. What would you like to tell the board? Um, it's been a long process, uh, a lot of approvals and stuff, but uh, do hard work and everything. We're at this point, so. Well, hats off to you. Uh, back to the board for any inquiries. When do you plan to open? Uh, within a few weeks. Motion to. You don't want to ask about employees or anything? Go right ahead. Uh, how many people have you hired? Uh, eight employees. And they're where are they from? They're all from Jersey City. Are you a micro? Yes. All right, nothing changed, right? No ownership? Nothing. Um, nothing in your security plan? We added extra cameras. That's All right, about. Jeff, if you want to make the motion, go for it. Motion accept CCB 22 10, Euphoria LLC at 138 Griffith Street. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Chairperson Bunny? Aye. Vice Chair Cantorero? Aye. Commissioner Kapowitz? Aye. Motion carries. Best of luck. Congratulations. Thank you very much for this Good opportunity. Luck. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, license uh, renewal pursuant to chapter section 84-51D of the Municipal Code, uh, and that's uh, CCB 22-34, uh, ripped dispensary, dispensary, previously Community Wellness Center of New Jersey. Uh, who's going to be testifying? All right, hey. please raise your right hand. Do you swear from the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Put your hand down. Uh, please state your name, spell your last name, give us your address. Jonathan Bednarsh, B-E-D-N-A-R-S-H, 94 Ridge Road, Rumson, New Jersey. All right, Mr. Bednarsh, what would you like to tell the, uh, the board? Uh, so we just wanted to give you a, a bit of an update on our business, um, after having just celebrated our first year. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity to appear here before you for this. Um, we've had a solid first year at RIPT. Uh, it's been very exciting. From a financial perspective, where our performance has been in line with uh, the initial projection that we had made and submitted to the board last year, or year and a half ago, and we're trending in the right direction in all the key metrics. Um, we have seen, interestingly, a drop off in the uh, medical side of the business, mostly because all the new growers, pretty much, and all the new products are on the medical side, or I'm sorry, are on the rec side, and uh, med patients have already been cut by half overall in the whole state. And it's just much more happening on the rec side. So um, that's just an interesting point to note. Um, but most importantly, I think what's been really interesting <clears throat> for us is after having seen thousands of customers come through our door in this last year, um, see how it really has materialized into reflecting the amazing community that is Jersey City. Uh, we, you know, all the demographics that of the people that walk through our doors are really mirror the diversity of of the city. We'll talk about the employees in a second, but um, it is very rewarding on a day in and day out, day in and day out basis to see that um, you know and feel like we really are adding to the community that we're a part of. Just as a little tidbit that we found interesting, we have as many customers that are in their 60s and above in terms of age, as we do that are in their 20s. Just to give you an idea of the very broad set of, of the people that, that come through the doors. So overall, 
it's been, you know, having served so many people and, and done it, um, you know, effectively has been really rewarding part of the year. We're also very proud of the team that we've uh, brought together. Uh, we've met uh, our goal, goals in terms of hiring. Um, we have 13 employees as of now. Uh, 92% are minority. 70% are from Hudson County. Uh, 50% of the, of the whole total is, is from Jersey City or are from Jersey City. And it's about evenly split between men and women. Um, within the community, uh, you know, we're very proud of the work. We've been working in this community for many years and, and continue to do so. Uh, for any of you that may have been to, to Ripped and seen the store, you know um, we've, we've really embraced the arts and music community here. Um, we have entire walls in the store that have been painted by local Jersey City artists. Um, we've also encouraged the use of our facility for no-cost community events. Um, we've had uh, a number of those, six of those so far, including uh, live painting, candle making, hip-hop performances, a job fair. Um, most recently, we were the first dispensary here in Jersey City to participate in the JC Art Friday program. We hosted um, a very gifted local artist who's also a medical cannabis patient. She named her exhibit uh, Medicine and Masterpieces, and so we were proud to be a part of that program. Um, we've also, along the way, we partnered with uh, Michael Hoffman and, and with an expungement, expungement clinic um, that was in downtown Jersey City back in November. Um, we've been uh, participated with Dr. Jeter um, at the Diversity and Inclusion Office in the last job fair that, uh, that they ran here in Jersey City, as well as when we did in our own store. And we continue to work closely with our long-term partners, um, Team Walker and Angela <coughs> Cares, um, on an ongoing basis. So in a nutshell, that's, that's our story uh, for the year. It's been amazing and exciting, and we look forward to uh, many more years here in Jersey City, and we're happy to answer any questions that you have. Have you had any complaints from either the CRC or uh, law enforcement? We have not. Okay. Back to the dais. How do you find the... How are you finding the suppliers, the growers in the state? There's more and more coming online. Finally, there's some product innovation uh, that we're seeing, which is great. And there's a lot of energy. There's some that are local. There's some that are coming from other places. It's, it's starting to be an interesting mix, um, which is great for us, great for our, our customers. So um, we're moving in the right direction as a state. If there aren't any questions from the board, I neglected to do, I'm sorry, did you have a question? No. Oh, uh, I neglected to do this for the last application. Any members of the public have any questions on the testimony that Mr. Bednarsh has provided thus far? Any comments from anyone? Hearing none, seeing none, back to the board for uh, deliberation. I, I think RIPT is another good operator. I think they're doing what they said they would do, so I make a motion to approve. I'll second. Roll call. Chairperson Bunny. Aye. Vice Chair Cantorero. Aye. Commissioner Kaplowitz. You, have a, you do have a good facility. Thank you very much. Uh, I vote aye. Thank you. All right. Congratulations. Best of luck. Thank you. All right. Uh, Ron is recused from the next one. We'd like to call CCB 22-30, 1634 Funk, LLC. I feel like this can move rather quickly because I don't know if you guys saw, but they basically submitted everything in writing prior to the meeting. So mm -hmm. no changes in ownership, Jersey, two Jersey City employees, one Union City employee. Saw that, yep. um, they're doing their community givebacks that they committed to. So um, does anyone have any questions? Does any member of the public have any questions? Motion to second. Yeah, go ahead. Chairperson Boney. Aye. Vice Chair Cantorero. Aye. Commissioner Kaplowitz. Thank you for joining the business community and wish you all the luck. Yeah, Again, best of luck. Year. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Bye. Be well. Okay, Ron is, Ron Mondello is back. For better or for worse. I, for better, in my <laughs> opinion. <laughs> Um, and now we're going to call CCB 24-79, the COOP JC LLC, uh, for their first review pursuant to Chapter 84 of the Municipal Code.
Bo, nice to see you again. When you get situated, please enter your appearance into the record. Well, we'll get yeah, him okay. started first. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, Bo Huck on uh, Porzio Bra. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I was saying goodbye to oh, a so counselor. Sorry, that's a new sorry. one. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, we, don't, we don't swear you in. We swear was, at you. Right. Yes. Jeez okay. <laughs> <laughs> Louise. Uh, good evening, Bo Huck, uh, Porzio Bromberg, and Newman on behalf of Mario Acosta of uh, Jersey City. He's pursuing a Class 5 retail license uh, over on 306 Manhattan Avenue. And I always say this. Thank you guys for being here. Volunteer public servants. Nobody ever appreciates it. A uh, bit of quick housekeeping. Say that a little louder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. A uh, bit of quick housekeeping. Uh, it's just Mario and I up here today because Mr. R uh, Nelson Rivera, a retired Jersey City police officer, needed to attend to a family emergency. Uh, he's, like, again, he's the guy that really knows the ins and outs of the security plan. Um, you know, some of you might know Mr. Costa. Okay, that's... He's a bit of a local legend. Who, uh, who hasn't eaten at the White Castle, especially around 3 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> White Castle, oh, White Manor. White Manor, White Manor. I apologize, White <laughs> Manor. Okay. Believe me, no, no free cheeseburgers for you. Yeah, exactly. Well, who hasn't That's had it. a, hey, a bucket? Good smash, what can I say? <laughs> so I've never had a client in Jersey City with a street named after him. <laughs> yeah. Or her. Uh, and I've never had a client whose their one business is literally a historic landmark in the area, uh, a designated historic landmark with one of the best burgers in the country and whose other business is a beloved watering hole and whose other business has trained some of the world's finest prize fighters and ta they've taught tremendous life skills and lessons to countless Jersey City youth. Uh, when I realized who I was representing, you know, I was kind of giddy. Uh, this guy is pretty amazing. It's not every day I get to meet and work with a person like him. It's a real honor, so thank you. Pleasure. Uh, Mr. Costa is... All right, pretty, please well, raise your... Oh, oh sorry. So Were I you know, calling yeah. on him, Counselor, or are you still doing your opening? Quick, quick opening. I just want to wrap this up. Go ahead, up. go I ahead. I want to put this all on the record. I apologize. There's a lot here. I promise you it's worth it. Uh, Mr. Costa is a Portuguese immigrant. He came to Jersey City when he was about 11 in 1967. It's been home to him ever since. He lives in the Heights, close to the diner that he owns. It's the American dream. It's basically what it means to be a good citizen, how he's behaved here. He's the owner of the iconic White Manor, 1N. <laughs> uh, he's the owner of the Ringside Cocktail Lounge and Restaurant, the, owning of the, the owner of the Ringside Boxing Gym on Tunnel Ave. Uh, and, again, it's way better than the one on Hackensack. Let's all just get that clear. Ron, I know that's a little personal to you, and that's a little bit of slight, so I know how I'm starting off there. Uh, and it's Mario's tenacity and business acumen that's enabled him to be a remarkably successful in, uh, businessman in Jersey City for over 44 plus years. And one of the state's most fiercely competitive markets being the diner industry here. And he's overcome, let's see, abhorrent racism. He's seen the city's highest uh, you know, points and its greatest lows. And locally, he's known as the godfather of Jersey City and sometime in his free time, like I said, he has managed to counsel more youth than I can count. So, with all that long-winded explanation and introduction. He was smart enough not to go to law school as well. He used yes. the money to buy the... Uh, right? the, the <laughs> <laughs> all right, please raise your right hand. Do you swear firm the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I Put do. your hand down. Please state your name, spell your last name, give us your address. Mario Costa, C-O-S-T-A, and I live in 277 in Manhattan Avenue, New Jersey City. Your um, witness, Counselor. The owner of the White Manor and the ringside lounge. Your witness. Mario, let's see. Why do you want to be in Jersey City? And this is a fun one. Huh? I said, why do you want to be in Jersey City with this business? Well, all my life, adult life, I'm in Jersey City, and I actually live right across the street from the diner. Yeah. And uh, I love Jersey City, and uh, I always, my goal is to always make Jersey City look good or do good things for Jersey City. And that's why I've been working in the White Manor since uh, going to high school in 1972. I started there at $1.57 an hour. And I worked through high school in Jersey City State College, saved all the money to go to law school. And then the owner, Webster Bridges, wanted to sell it. I used their money and I bought the diner. Never expected to 
stayed with that so far now. It's some 40-some years. And the bar across the street, I didn't go to bars. I don't drink. I think that's why I'm still here. I drink maybe a little wine when I eat the food. But I never left my bar drunk in 40-some years. And uh, the reason why I bought it because they're closed. And uh, the owner kept coming and asking me to buy the bar. And I didn't want to buy the bar. But one day I asked him, well, how much do you want? It was a Polish bar, Judd's. It's been there since 1910. Wow. And he said $15,000 and uh, $500 rent. Because it was across the street, I bought the bar. And now it's and next to the bar. It used to be upstairs. There was a gym open for the kids after school. Now it's on one of the, my properties next to the bar where there's a boxing gym where Tyson, Gotti, a lot of champions train, but mostly it's for the kids after school. And when parents bring their kids, whether they're 10, 12 years old, I tell them that they, I don't want them to be fighters. They should just come to the gym to stay off the streets and learn how to protect themselves or do the exercise, but they don't have to be fighters, you know. And this is what the gym, I have kids there that come, one kid for five years, never had an amateur fight, or a professional fight, but he comes, now he brings his little brother, and normally eight, ten kids every day, and it's for free. Uh, a couple of times the city was going to help, but I always pay for everything, and it's for free. How, uh, this is just a standard class five, not a micro, right? Correct. You still have the pigeons upstairs? Yeah. You still have the pigeons upstairs? Tyson's pigeons? Oh, yes. We still, yes. We, we, well, when Custia Amato, his uh, mentor, passed away, and Camille Wall was her, her, his mom. Right. But that adopted him. It was Custia Amato and Camille Wall. And Camille passed away. She was the last one, 97. But I got real close to Camille. And when they, Cus had passed away, I think, 95 a year before Mike became champion. And uh, when Camille passed away, Mike asked me to go get the birds because they were going to get rid of everything. So I got all the birds, and I bought the original door from his coop that him and Cus had since he was like 14 years old, and some of the purchase, some of the items from the coop, and made a coop in Jersey City. And it's called Tyson's Corner, and we're still racing the home in pigeons out of Lynnhurst, a uh, home in club, a uh, home in pigeon club. Hmm. So that's where the name for the uh, cannabis store came from. Yeah, that's why it's the coop. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very cool. That was literally my next question for him. So thank you for the leading question. That was great. <laughs> yes. Why do you want to get in the cannabis industry? <clears throat> what inspired you to do so? Yeah. What inspired you to get into the cannabis industry? I can hear. You. What inspired you to get into the cannabis industry? Well, the, the cannabis is just like a personal story. Uh, well, it starts with Mike. Mike smokes, you know, the cannabis. It sort of keeps him away from other drugs. And Custia model then like, like most athletes, they get injured. And the doctors right away, they give him Oxy or Percocet. And Cus always told him to stay away from Sometimes those drugs are more dangerous than the other drugs. Sure. So Mike... The smoke, the, the the cannabis has been helping him a lot. He's into trying to get into the oils, different things they extract from cannabis, whether it's for kids with seizures, adults, people with alcohol, uh, uh, alcoholism problem. And it's been helping him all these years, staying away from drinking. He, he used to drink Hennessy. He thought everybody wanted to fight him. You know, he thought like it was so... Cannabis sort of stays away, and we had a personal friend that you probably guys remember, Arturo Gotti Jr., which he committed suicide. Well, his son comes to stay with the grandmother, and in the summer he comes by me now. I'm like his dad, and I told him since she was eight, you don't have to become a fighter like your dad was, but he's, he's, he's had like five amateur fights. But his dad, he had a problem. They started getting with the opioids because both his hands were broken. And they took bone from his hip, put it in his, in his hand to keep the, the hand from breaking again. And he got, I guess they prescribed Percocet. And one day he told me that his breakfast was three Percocets. And I think 15 years ago, because his son is 15, if cannabis was legal or there was other things that they extract, maybe he still would be here with us today. You know? 
And this is one of the reasons why I, I want to get involved. I got to ask the question, will you be the local point of contact 24-7 if something were to happen with the business for the community to reach out to you? Yes, I'm, I live right across the street. You know, This is my residence and since 1979. Will you be doing any future expungement clinics down the line? Will you be doing any future expungement clinics down the line, helping people to fix their criminal records? Yes, well, uh, I've been, uh, well, not only with the boxing, I think I, I, I've been given, uh, I go to Integrity House, people with addiction in the Sea Caucus. Uh, I've been doing that for like six years. Uh, I uh, pick up donuts at the donut shop on Tunnelly Avenue. I give them like $40 every week, and the donuts they throw in the garbage, they put it in the bag for me. And I bring them every night that I close, snow, rain. If there's donuts there, I'll bring them to Integrity House. Uh, more here, one of the nonprofit organizations for people that have cancer. Yes, I've been, I've been with them. They gave me an award last year. So, uh, you know, anything I can help, I help make Jersey City look better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Last question I have for you, because I know the board's time is valuable. Are you going to be hiring 100% Jersey City residents? Yes. Mm -hmm. And my nephew also is the detective for 20 years. He works at the North. North, North uh, Precinct on Central Avenue. And both of them, Eddie, Eduardo, and uh, David graduated from St. Peter's College. David went to St. Peter's for like a year and a half. Yes. All right. <clears throat> Anything else, Counselor? Questions? Is a building existing that you're renovating or you're building a new building on site? <clears throat> The, I own the building. I don't have any mortgage, anything. I've been on it for a long time, so it's... it's so yeah. you're just going to use space within that yeah, building? Yeah, space, right. 3,000 square feet, if I'm not mistaken. It's big. Yeah. Any other questions from... Uh, <clears throat> Maynard, can you confirm that the safety and security plan was approved by JCBD? Hasn't come back yet. Well... Mm. So, I, I mean, Mario is a great businessman, and he does do a lot of things for the Jersey City huh? community. Yes, he does. And I, I, I think that we would be doing a disservice to not approve his application because I do think he'll be a good operator. 100%. And I think he has always done what's right for Jersey City. I think he will always do what's right for Jersey City. I know he does the toy drives. He does the turkey drives. Mm -hmm. I know if there's ever a family in need that he knows of, you know, he will help them with whatever it is they need. He is definitely a Jersey City legend. He's a Jersey City resident. I mean, he's really what we are supposed to be looking for. So I pending the approval of the security plan because we've done that with mm -hmm. prior applicants <clears throat> pending approval of the security plan i make a motion to approve uh, uh, any, oh, wait, sorry. any 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 uh, members of the public have any questions uh is this question is questions for uh, mr costa you have questions anyone have any questions hearing none seeing none uh yeah, members of the public want to make a statement you're limited to three minutes come on up marty we're about to approve it so do you still want to go on the record yeah, okay, go ahead. All right, uh, before we get started, sir, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear firm? Use the microphone. Yeah. There you okay. go. Do you swear firm the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. You can put your hand down. Please state your name, spell your last name, give us your address. Martin Budnick. B U D I N I C K, 246 Thomas Avenue, Lynnhurst, New Jersey. What would you like to say to the board, Mr. Budnick? Uh, real quick, I know Mr. Costa for probably over 45 years. Uh, when he was flipping hamburgers in the White Castle. <laughs> white Manor. <laughs> there you go, the White I, Castle. <laughs> See what I you said. There's more that's of them. Why, that's why, why, with really, that's why I wanted to talk. a troublemaker. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> he's been a neighbor of mine, business neighbor of mine. Uh, I had an auto body shop on Tunley Avenue for over 30 years. He's a stand-up guy. He's a good guy. 
uh, and uh, I hope the board uh, approves his application. He's been uh, he's been uh, good to the community. He's always there. And uh, on a personal note, when I was uh, sick with COVID and I got out of the hospital after five days, um, <coughs> you know, Mario uh, brought food to the house every day, out to Lynnhurst. And it, uh, <coughs> it got to the point where I had to tell him to stop. So I, I hope the board uh, takes care of uh, the, the businessman that takes care of uh, the people in Jerry City. Thank you, Mr. Budding. Anyone else? Questions, comments, hearing none. Back to you, Madam Chair. Uh, I made a motion to approve pending the security plan, and I, I feel Jeff should go on Facebook Live, make a little mini movie called Jeff Goes to White Mana <laughs> as, a, as a public apology for calling a White Castle. <laughs> I spent many a nights at the White Manor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Any time from midnight to th yes. four in the morning. Yes. All right. There's a motion. I'll second the motion. Roll call. Chairperson Bunny. Aye. Vice Chairperson Cantor. Aye. Commissioner Kaplowitz. I wish you all the luck. Seriously, yes, you're a good candidate for cannabis. Thank you. Congratulations. So Congratulations, nice meeting you. Mario. Thank, Thank you, guys. Have a good night. All right. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, we have to memorialize the resolutions, right? We do. <clears throat> 1349. That, that was taken off, right? Uh, no, the other side was taken off. That was a misunderstanding. All right. So <clears throat> let's take uh, Ripped uh, Dispensary. Is there a uh, motion. motion? Thank you. Is there second. a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion is approved. We'll now take <coughs> Euphoria. Any motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That one is approved. <coughs> and finally, <coughs> the uh, Coop JC. Uh, any discussion? Is there a motion? Motion. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Motion then, carries. Uh, you signed them all. We can't memorialize 1634 Funk because you can't write the thing. So. I make a motion to, uh, I guess I'll ask the law department to write it, but. I, I'll second the motion, okay. Brittany, to ask the law department. I can send it. them a template. Yeah, okay. So we, we approve it. We just don't have it in writing. Okay. So motion, second. All in favor, right? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay, any open discussion? Yes. I just okay. have one quick question. How does the board want to handle a change of address? Because we're getting quite a few of those what do you mean for by applications that have already been approved by the board. I, we've made them come back in the past. Um, I don't, th they have to come back, but this is. I guess the real, the other part of that question is somewhat two part is because there, there's a change of address, but it's during when we have a moratorium on accepting applications. Well, we have to he have a hearing. I mean, yes. basically. You know, well, they were in before the moratorium, <clears throat> technically. So I feel like the moratorium doesn't. There are no more. They, right, uh, yeah, they were here. They were right. here before. Yeah. and now we we approved them, presumably, and now they've changed the address. Yes, yeah, that's quite a rigmarole with the CRC. That is not a slam dunk. Um, I, I, so I we should be reviewing that too. Should but they go to CRC first? Well, um, uh, they hold may on, need. Though. I I have another question. It's, it's, it's up to the board, but and this is, I, even, this I is even after the council had approved them, right? The council approved them. The council. No. I feel like I don't know why anyone would want to oh, okay. open a cannabis correction in Jersey City at this point, but uh, it, it's not necessarily a new application. It's an amendment, but. You guys may be very dissatisfied with this change in location, location especially yeah. if it's mm -hmm. on Central Ave. All right, is yeah. that it's on Central Avenue. Uh, no. So I, how do you I want to go about it? Do you want them to return to us? I think they us? should have to. No, they, well, they I have think, to come back to us. I think that basically they should go through the same procedures of, not not in the sense of, um, the, the, well, the, actually, they have to go through everything. If it's a brand new location... They're going to have to show uh, the security plan to the police. They're going to have to like deal with. Well, I don't. I don't agree with you because if if the security plan hasn't changed and it's already been approved by the police, I don't think it needs to be it's a brand new location. How do you know what the building, uh, what exists in that building, the location of the I building, everything aspect? It's a brand new location. 
It's I just, just I, one of my biggest concerns is really just the is it treated as a new application? And if it is treated as a new application during this moratorium, then we really should not be hearing them. I don't think it's a new application. I think it's an amendment to an existing application. A serious amendment. That's a, a serious se amendment. Yeah, it's I mean, a it's serious new. amendment, it's but new. it's not new. Right, it's not new, it's but it's the same it, business. It's the Jeff same business. Jeff just wants to disagree with me. This is how it, it works. Whatever the but, board decides. Well, it, 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 but you're going to have I, to deal with every aspect of the new location, and they should be here testifying We to just that. said they should come back. Okay. Nobody said they shouldn't. Okay. You don't listen when we talk, but we did say they should come back. I still think it's a new application, but that's all right. Well, if the board attorney is telling us it's not, I trust his expertise. So it's not I a defer planning to board. Ron. It's not a zoning issue. It's the same business. It's just they have relocated to somewhere else. Same business. We're here to really evaluate the business. So you, got, gonna... you, have, you have zoning and planning to take care of the actual physical you know, location and the ordinances. We want to know this location, does it fit with... You know, within the parameters that we have decided to either, or this board has decided to either approve or not approve a cannabis dispensary. But my concern is that what I still don't really understand is, well, and we didn't write the letter because we had a, a resignation, but my concern is that the ordinance isn't being amended. And so my biggest concern still are these pins in the map and these businesses that still aren't open that are holding the pin but have probably no viability to ever open and still no funding. Because that, I, I mean, how many have opened? Like 10 of the 70? Like at some point, this has to be reined in. It's insane. Like I, I feel that it's not fair to the people who are already open that we continue to sit here and give these people time to open. I mean... I don't want anyone to go out of business, but I don't think businesses that aren't even in business yet and have done nothing to move their business forward should continue to hold these pins in the map. So with that, along that's where those we're at holding the, the letter that we're writing to the council. We're holding these concerns. Well, we're holding it because we, yeah, Courtney resigned from the board. I, we could say that publicly now. Courtney resigned. <coughs> so that, that is correct. Uh, Courtney has resigned. We thank her for her years. Yes, of we service. thank Courtney for her her oh. years of service and. and Maynard, uh, the new location, is it near, is it an overcrowded uh, section of the city? Is it near we another about, location? Gonna, no, we, we cannot talk the about an application, application without the applicant being here. We don't want to get into that. We can do that through on the planning board or zoning board. I understand, but again, it's a new, again, I just don't think it's an existing application that we're just simply going to another location. I think it has to go through the entire process. I disagree because we already heard the application and we approved it. Is there anything in our municipal ordinance that helps us to no. come up with a, a, some guidelines to this or no? It's the, our no. ordinance <laughs> the <board's prerogative. laughs> does not guide us it? in many ways at all. Okay. I mean, I it's a brand new, it's, it's a new location and everything about a new location involves how do you talk about community input and all that other stuff but we're what not, but i if we bring them back we can address I, those points you can't them. ask that stuff. you can ask whatever you want but it, it's oh i don't want to hear it, but we've done it before we've already done it so you guys go on and on and on about treating everybody fairly. We've already had people who have changed their address who came back. We treated it as an existing application with an amendment. But the reality of it is the community impact, they're all basically saying, I'm going to go with this organization. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a good neighbor. Uh, the only reason it would factor in is if there's a very active neighborhood association because we've made all of the other applicants go back to the neighborhood association for community input. But otherwise, to me, it's an address change. They should come back. They should explain why they're changing their address. But in most cases, the hiring plan will be the same. The community impact plan will be the same. The security, if you look at almost every single one of these plans, the differences are either armed guard, unarmed guard. They're basically the same. It's cameras. It's whatever consultant they hired. I, I don't want to make it any harder for these businesses than it's already been for them. I don't want to hold anybody up. But I also think that we're just in a very bad holding pattern until the ordinance is amended. And we deal with these people who are holding <coughs> pins in the map. Well, I again, I think that if they change an address, I don't have a problem saying it is a pre-existing application. But 
I think they should go through all the same procedures that everybody else did when they went to a location. They should go out to the community group before they come here. They should re you can ask them to and they should re-emphasize the to the people who they've done, decided to like. But donate it, it could be a part like uh, there's no neighborhood association for Mario where Mario is located. There's literally you don't even know where the location is. When they come here, you can ask them any question that you want to uh, ask them. As a board I, member, that is your right. Well, again. But our if, if it's on the highway, it's a, I got no problem with that. But I've seen you included very much so denying people to come back three, four times until they went to the community organization. I that, just said that, that I did that. I said that would be the only reason they would have to go back out to the community. I don't think they should come here until they actually sit down and do that. We don't know the address. We well, don't. They know the address. And even if we don't know the address, it could be very related to them that they should interact with the community. If they've already been in front of the board, I would imagine they know that. Anyone who's sat through any of these meetings well, knows what the board's expectation is. I don't is. take anything for granted that everybody knows everything. I think that it should be restated that they go out there so we don't waste our time at a meeting. That, oh, you didn't go to the neighborhood group. Is there anybody from the neighborhood you talk to? Well, you know. So can we include that? We then that's it's that? in our right to deny the application. Like it's incumbent on these applicants to do the work to get the license. It's not our job to handhold them every step of the process. Maynard and Marquia and their office do an excellent job. They do a lot of work. It's an insane amount of work, and I don't I, I don't like directing them to do more. It, it we're saying on the record, if you're applying to this board. You should be going to the community groups. You should be doing your own due diligence. It is not our job to tell somebody how to get the board to vote the way they want the board to vote. Yeah, but you're wasting the board's time and the community's time to come here and say, well, we weren't talked to. Well, speaking of city resources, and this would be the board's prerogative, <clears throat> although I, I do believe it is an amendment to the application, do we impose uh, new fees? We do. Okay. Yeah, I think well, that's Well, that's, that's based on the ordinance, though. That's... Now, once... once the board has heard the application, then we assume that's what it's paid for. It's an application fee. So if you're reapplying, we do charge a second uh, application fee. Yeah, that makes sense. And I, I'm not sure that's addressed in the ordinance, but I, that makes a lot of sense. All right. No, um, we have done that in the past for other applications. Can, can I, we just for a minute, speak up, go back to the letter. Um, am I now authorized to send this letter speaking about ordinance amendments and how we would like there to be a sort of a ticking clock on? Yes, but I want the letter to go to the city clerk so it is sent to the entire city council because it is the biggest thing that is unfair to this board is that the ordinance has not been amended. It's we come here and we do this work and it's all volunteer based and we're getting no support on amending this ordinance, but it's not fair to the applicants. It's not fair to the board. It's not fair to Maynard and Marquia and their office. It needs to be amended. It, it just Take does. Care of it. I'll circulate it uh, to everybody and see what your input is. Uh, you can just <clears throat> reply to me individually and I'm happy to change it and then get a <laughs> Marquia saying no reply all. Um, yes. Well, I that, always, I've, I've, that's why I, I, I put people in the BCC so that it's, there is no reply all. Gotcha. Because it automatically takes it off. Well, yeah. I'm still going to do it. Just to irritate you. I, I don't know why this is like comical or adult, but okay. Well, I'm guessing that's is it. Is there any other business we want to address? Uh, no, I do think the letter should still address additional board members or alternates mm -hmm. because, as you can see, yeah, that was one if of, the points one of us couldn't yep. make it tonight, we would not have had a quorum. And that's not fair to Maynard and Marquia and the applicants either. Mm -hmm. And we usually find out at the very last minute. And then that's not fair to people who have paid to have experts here. So I feel I like we should have alternates or the board needs to be expanded. Uh, but I am and just some guidelines on, hey... You have three excuse absences for excuse Yeah, no, the absences, there has to be a reason. And it, it, it can't just be, and after a certain number, there should be some sort of remedy to deal with the situation because in the past it was excessive. Mm -hmm. And we all make it our business to be here. Right, so we all like committed to doing this. also make so. it their business to be here. And, and, and that's why I had thought perhaps that that section might be deleted from the letter, but I understand you still would like some guidance with respect to attendance. Yeah, I think if it happened in the past, I, I'm not, you know, I don't foresee it not happening in the future. So I think if we set some guidelines in place now, everybody, you know, every board member that 
comes up in the future has some sort of guidelines to so we're to essentially follow. going back to the original game plan on the letter. Yeah. Okay. All I right. think so. That's what I needed. Okay. Any other business? No. Motions end? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. 